Single or poly or ace, or hanging out with swingers back at your place. Listen to us as we give no fuck. On Tinder and Bumble and plenty of yucks. Trying and trying and having no luck. Because we all know dating kinda sucks. Are two of a kind. He says stupid shit and she doesn't mind. They're not doing this show to make any bucks. Life as a chicken whose feathers they pluck. Why does it work? Well, here is the crux. They both know. Dating kinda sucks. Dating kinda sucks. Hi, I'm Adam Heath of Itable. And I'm Sarah. This is the DKS Podcast, a podcast about love, sex, culture, and society. This week, we'll be discussing the 4B movement and why women no longer need men. Enjoy the show. And hey, YouTube, thanks so much for watching. Now is the time to like our post, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss an upcoming video on this channel. Well, oops, we skipped March. (laughs) I don't even know what happens. Uh, I would, of course, blame Sarah for her travel schedule, but she was only partly to blame. Uh, I couldn't come up with a good topic. We tried and just nothing was really hitting with with either of us. And I wasn't feeling the podcast vibe for a month. So we took a break. But here we are. We're still here. Yeah. Um, you know, did you miss us? I hope you did. Hope everybody missed us. Um, that's a good thing. Maybe we're giving you too much of us. And now you now you have to you had to miss us for a little bit. <laughs> right. We're like trying the, you know, the anxious attachment style uh, with uh, with the podcast. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we are back, uh, and there is a really interesting and and exciting movement out of uh, out of South Korea called the Four B movement that's uh, been around for a few years that has inspired us to explore a concept that should be worrying to every American man with an unwashed ass that women don't need you anymore, bro. But before we get into that exciting topic, we're going to catch up on our lives since it's been a minute and give you an update on our latest episode about passport bros because surprise, men, passport bros and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. But of course, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you and your input always helps us so much. So if you're listening and again, you have a question or a scenario that you're struggling with, we want to hear from you. It's the year of the listener. You can call our DKS hotline and leave a voicemail at 407-519-0181. Or you can email us at datingkindofsuckspodcast at gmail.com if leaving a voicemail isn't really your thing. But uh, Adam, <laughs> our last episode was February. I hope we remember how to do this. Uh, what do you have to say about us taking this long of a break? I know it feels weird. Like usually it's because, oh, you're overseas for a month, so we can't do a, do it for, you know, 30 days because you have bad internet or something. But so something just like that. Yeah. Case of just, I don't know. I think um, I was trying to do a bunch of other things and we, and like every topic we're like, Ugh. yeah, I mean, what's the point of doing something that we are not even going to be excited about? We can't expect you guys to give a shit about it either. Right, exactly, you know? yeah. like, <laughs> like I would come up with an idea and Sarah's like, nah, and then you'd come up with an idea and I was like, uh, nah. And like, we just, nothing was really like grabbing us. We were going to talk about something not even related to like, you know what? Cause we're trying to shift beyond just dating sex and relationships, but, uh, but that is kind of still the core of, of what we talk about. And I, cause I think relationships has so much to talk about regardless oh, yeah. of, anything else but yeah we just we had a hard time with that and i think and and you i could tell like when i was like i'm not let's just take a break you're like okay let's take a break immediately like, yes yes yeah because <laughs> you've, you've got you know you've got your you've got an active life and and since coming to tulsa my my life has become more active um you know i, I, I know, realized that yeah. i had taken a break from stand-up before uh before going you know um starting this podcast and now that i'm doing that uh as well it's it is it's time consuming um my my nights that we like to record, I would uh, sometimes like to be out on doing something or be on stage, and so that's a little bit harder to kind of coordinate both of those things. So, but here we are, and uh, we have something interesting and weird to talk about, which I think is good. And, yeah, uh, and um, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So, what else is new in Tulsa outside of just going to more stand up, making more friends? I keep seeing all your Instagram posts. You seem to have a crew now in Tulsa. 
Yeah, well, um, you know, the, the Tulsa remote community is they really try to kind of get you active, which I, I, I admire. You know, I think that's a good thing. Um, and they like they'll they always have events going on. They have like groups that they'll give discounts to certain things and just and, you know, all types of things that be like, come out and try it. Come out and do this. And and uh, it was funny because back in March they were promoting um, last weekend. They were doing a, a huge family day at the um, basketball arena to watch the Harlem Globetrotters play basketball. Okay. And, uh, family you know, day. Yeah. Okay. Like it was like a go meet up for lunch at a local restaurant. Um, everybody meet up there, like basically taking over the whole restaurant and then uh, go over and watch, you know, we had a whole, they had a whole section of the uh, arena set up uh, or the stand set up for, for adults remote people to go watch the game. I was like, Oh, that's not bad. And tickets were like really cheap. They're like 10 bucks each or something like that. 15 bucks. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. You know, you know, I'll, I'll get a ticket. Cause that could be, that could be fun. Um, and then as the day got closer, I was like, what the fuck was I thinking? Like that could be fun. Like I like, going out with a group of families to lunch and then going to watch a basketball game. Like I got sucked into their, their bullshit is what I did. Like they, they sucked me in and it almost got me, but then I gave up my tickets. So that was, uh, <clears throat> I'm surprised I, you came to your senses. Cause I was questioning why you, I was like family day. I, family I know, day. I know, what? I know, I know. I just think, I, like I said, they, they're, they're always promoting all these things. And I was like, Oh, I should be more active. I should do that. They also, uh, they are doing a thing, which I, I will do, um, where, because a lot of, obviously, Tulsa Remote is all remote workers, and so they have a, a couple uh, co-working spaces that you can take advantage of that you have a, you know, free membership to that I have not stepped into once beyond my initial orientation because I have no desire to do that, but they're doing like a lunch thing now where they, you can sign up and they're breaking people into groups of like four or five people. And then uh, covering lunch um, like once or whatever, like in a, it's, in a, it's next week. That would week get after. me in. And yeah. And like <laughs> free and food. Kind of, yep. I'm free in. lunch. Just try to get people of different backgrounds to kind of chat and everything. And I was like, you know what? I can do that. I'll get, I can go eat lunch. That's fine with me because I can make sure it's a day that I don't have any work to do afterwards. And I can just call, I can call it a day after lunch. I can go out and do whatever, you know? So that'll be my, uh, you know, my excuse. So Update that's at the office. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that, exactly. So, so I, I am trying to get more involved in those things when they are suitable for me and right. even sometimes being fooled by them occasionally. <laughs> um, I, I have, uh, yeah, so I've been doing that. And yes, I, I've met my, uh, I have two neighbors that I've become friends with. And um, since we're all in the same building, it's nice to be like, Hey, you know, we're going to walk around the corner to, to, you know, grab a drink or whatever. Do you want to join us? And so um that we've been doing that uh, occasionally, you know, a couple times a, a week usually, and that's pretty nice. It's nice to have like a little, just a little group of friends. Um, yeah. And then of course stand up. I've been uh, been out there doing open mics and working on uh, new material, and that's been going well. And getting to know the comedy scene pretty well, and the uh, comedians who are all um, generally pretty, pretty, pretty cool and pretty supportive people. And I'm I'm like enjoying meeting a lot of them. And that's that's oh, nice. okay. You're meeting you're meeting better comedians because before you were just saying everybody's got some kind of sex joke or dick joke well like no so that's open mic i mean when you go to open mic uh you know the there are the, the very first time i went to open mic i was like okay yes like i some of the comics i was like oh these, they're they're terrible uh but as i've been going to more i'm seeing the few that are good that that are that are popping okay up. And, I'm, and so yes they're not all terrible but they the unfortunate things here is that there are two open mics that are at a comedy club at two at a, two different comedy clubs and they are um they're kind of open to anyone who wants to go out. I mean, they're all open mics are open to anyone, but they promote. So they're like, you know, Hey, come on out. And if you try stand up for the first time. And so that's where you get a lot of the really, really shitty uh, ones. And the um, beginner beginners who probably yeah. shouldn't do it. Who? Yeah. Who, there's not much potential. They just, you know, they're giving it a try and everyone's everyone at work says they're funny. So they're going to get up and try to, you know, be funny. And then they realize, Oh, unless you work with me or my friend, you're not going to laugh at me. How odd, you know, but, uh, right. <clears throat> it, it is pretty funny. The other night there's this, um, kid showing up who's been, I mean, I, he's, I say kid, he's probably just, I think, he, I think he's still in college. Um, I don't know if he's 21. I can't tell. Um, but he lives with his fiance. So, so then maybe he is 21, but he looks very young. He looks like the kid from stranger things, like the main, Kid, okay. the, one that, the one that's like in the Ghostbusters movie. I always forget his name, but he looks like him. Um, and he's got some good material, but like Monday night, no, Sunday night at open mic, he gets up and he's doing this material, and then he does this this joke about something something like um I always ask my fiance to 
to go to Starbucks and place our order because getting to know, because if you know, your if you know a Starbucks order by, by heart, I think that just means you're gay. I think that was his joke. Yeah. Oh my God. And I was like, that's one that's not really funny, but also is gay all of a sudden a pejorative again in 2024? Like, we, we, right. Music. Yeah. Did we not do that? We, I went through that when I was her, his age, you know, 20 years ago that, you know, you used gay as an insult, you know, that was not a thing. And, th- and then we grew out of that. Like, uh, so then when I was on stage, I was telling, a, I was telling a, a, a bit about uh, pranks and stuff when I was in college. And I was like, you know, when, when you're in college and you're just like a cis head white man, you know, like, you know, the jokes you come up with are basically things you do are, are basically, you know, funny. Cause you're, you're do them like someone who's not you, you know, like you, you know, you throw like a bitch or, you know, like, uh, then I was, I think the ones I was saying was like, um, you throw, you throw like a bitch, your music taste is gay. Um, you kiss like a girl, you cut my balls like a girl, you suck my dick like a girl. Like was that was the joke I was making. But anyways, um, but and in that, and I was like, but you know, but things have changed. I said, apparently, unless you're apparently this twink over here who thinks that being gay is somehow uh you know, is, is still an insult. And the crowd Damn. loved it. Like they because they like the crowd is pretty progressive there, and they were kind of annoyed with that joke too. Um, and he uh did not look me in the eye when he left that night and neither did his God girlfriend damn. or fiance. Um, Cause I, you know, he was like a comic who's, you know, been, been you know, he obviously I've been around now, been doing this for a while and uh, calling him out for having a shitty joke, but hopefully he learns from it because his other material is good. And I have no problem calling out shitty material. So it just, uh, it came out just, I didn't mean to either. It was just because I was on stage talking about this. It was, it was just easy to let it rip. Yeah. yeah. Easy, easy to just to say it. So yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been, uh, been doing that um i even went on a date recently too oh look at you i know I and know, I, haven't, I haven't been too active on the on the apps uh, well I, I guess since we've talked i've probably been on two dates with two different people um, right that's, yeah yeah that's so right. uh one was uh we, we had a good time there wasn't really any any like chemistry beyond just kind of someone really fun to hang out with and i mean uh you know she was a day drinker so we we started day drinking on, on, on like a saturday and you know, it was, it was quite a night, um, like started at like 3 PM. And then I think, you know, I finally, we left it like, we left, we, we left the third bar that we were at it by like 9 PM. You know, that was one of those, one of those days, mm-hmm. the, this one, uh, this day was, uh, just, uh, someone who is right now isn't drinking because she has a friend who's going through sobriety and she promised her friend that she wouldn't drink for as long as her friend didn't in a show of support. And then she said, uh, she told me that uh, she goes, I really didn't think she would last this long. So this has been hard, but I really didn't think my friend was gonna be able to stay sober for this long. Um, but, uh, and I was like, well, do, do you have to stay sober? You can't have drinks when you're not with her. Like, how does that affect her? Like her sobriety? If you're not with her, like, it doesn't matter. And she goes, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm thinking it might be time to talk to her about, you know, some exceptions to that. But, um, you know, we went out to this, uh, little local, local arcade bar, and uh, just you know, hung out for uh, like an hour and a half, uh, two hours, just kind of chatting. She was uh, very introverted, very quiet. And um, and wait, how did you meet on the app? Bumble, yeah, it was through Bumble. Through okay. Bumble. Yeah. Um, and so we and and, and we had a good like good time, good conversation. Um, didn't end up going anywhere after that, but uh, but it was you know it was nice to it's nice to get out there and just sometimes talk to people for a little bit. Um, yeah. I realized that when when I don't have the podcast and if I'm not talking to you on the phone or out with my neighbors, <laughs> you don't talk to anybody. I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> and sometimes like, um, like I realize that I, I can not trauma dump cause I don't have trauma to really worry about, but I can just be like info dump sometimes just because when I, when I meet somebody new, cause I'm like, Oh, someone to talk to that I haven't talked to in a while. So I have to be very careful about that and try to keep myself from, you know, make sure I ask questions and, and everything as well than just to, Blah, blah blah blah, you know, like because yeah. literally, there's there's so many things I could talk about. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's been good, and um, yeah, I think that uh, this is what we're this is April 9th. So yeah, there's a there's not really much like I have planned plan going on uh, for the rest of the month, except other than just comedy. I've got a show that I'm on at the end of the month, and I'm trying to, like I said, build this hour. So I really want to try to get on a bunch of shows. That's, that's my kind of goal is to start doing shows every weekend, so I can really start working on stretching my material and you know just getting it from five minutes to to 15 to 20 to 30 you know stuff like yeah. that yeah very cool yeah i'm so happy for you yeah so 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 far it's been good tulsa's been 
been a good good spot for for a bit. I don't know how long I'll be here. I said I said I'm giving myself two years, um, but uh, but you know that that that's fine. Though. I think in two years I could have a really good time here. Yeah, totally. So understand that. Yeah. Um, what about you? It's uh, you've I been, mean, you've been you've been busy. Um, I yeah, no, yeah, I won't even say I guess. Yes. Um, went to Las Vegas. Everybody knows my least favorite city in the world. I went for work and did not want to go because I fucking hate Las Vegas. Um, and you were so optimistic and just kept saying it'll be so much better. It'll be so much better because I was coming at it from a corporate conference right? and yes. I don't think it got any better because I was so damn busy and stressed out the entire time that I didn't, again, didn't really get to experience Vegas. I saw inside the Venetian and inside the conference halls and that was it pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, so I was, I was hoping you were going to have some downtime to be able to like go out and explore some of the, cause the things that you enjoy doing, you know, which is, you know, explore some of the restaurants and go, you know, eat, eat at some cool places, maybe check out a couple of the cool speakeasies, you know, things like that. Um, and, and yeah, yeah. Not, didn't expect you to be quite, couldn't so even leave. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't even really leave the main building. So right. unfortunate. Um, but Was you know, it better whatever. or worse than your last experience though. And so, so I thought about that because Roy asked me that same question. He's like, which would you prefer a mental breakdown or just a work event? Um, I guess I would prefer the less traumatic ones. So probably work. I was going to say, yeah, it was just, yeah, that because the, because that was, that was Canadian John or something Can, like Canadian that. Canadian bacon. Yeah. Canadian bacon, titty bumps, all types of things. <laughs> yes. All types of fun um and yeah. uh you in tears for like days calling my ex-boyfriend just tragic yeah, shit um yeah. so and yeah it wasn't that and i'm so, happy so i guess I, you know <laughs> so maybe next 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 time it'll be uh it'll be worth it i really do think that if you went like on vacation like if you and roy went i would whatever, never i would I never know, go know, on vacation there no never but ever. i feel like if you did um, go no. with you and roy went and stayed in like the old strip and you were like chose some cool places to go to i feel like you could have a good time there i feel like it, but i'm never going to do that i know, I know and let's not, be clear i know, I, 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 I won't ever go back there unless i'm forced to because of work yes i know i know so I made that very clear we originally <laughs> last year were saying hey should we do try to do a meetup in and try to do it in vegas yeah and now um, i've completely changed my tune on okay, that so because that's I, never happening yeah because i like the idea because we were going to do like a choose your own adventure where you could like take the saturday and either go with adam or go with sarah and like you know and so you, you people who came could uh, kind of figure out which path they wanted to go for the night for the day drink at but, dive bars or go on a hike basically, on, exactly as i was saying choices. yeah go check out the hoover dam and go do some nerdy shit or uh or go get drunk you know nerdy shit. <laughs> i mean i still want to do those things but i don't want to go back to vegas so yeah, i don't yeah, know i get it so you survive um, vegas and survive that and then it was it's just been a lot of travel and doing shit um because right after i got home from vegas i then hopped on a flight and went to new orleans roy's um aunt and uncle live there and it was i've never been to louisiana in general so it was fun yeah. to just be there for what like four or five days um and we had a blast i, I have no complaints except for it was just already hot in march when we went God, um yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> it's okay um I don't know. I like if it wasn't for climate change and just being in a swamp, Roy and I both said, you know, Louisiana, I don't know, even though it's a red state, that's that's the other con. But yeah, um, because yeah. we had considered moving there because it was closer to it's only an eight hour drive from Nashville. So we could still say stay in the southeast. But we flipped a coin and said, let's make a big move. So you made, you made the right choice because I think uh, we did. I would say yeah. you, you should go back there in July first and then be like, oh, fuck no. I mean, a lot of people said that to me when I made yeah. the comment of I was seeing houses that I could afford and they said, yeah, go back in the summertime. And I already, I already know I don't want to fucking be there at that point. So, right. And you were, so you were there and um, I mean, the they had a parade, right? They had an Easter parade. Oh, my God. It was so fun. They had two Easter parades. One was more tame. And then the other one was more of like a gay Easter parade. Uh -huh. And um, we were standing in front of a gay bar where the parade was going by. And there was a guy dressed in, as Jesus. And he had he had like this strappy little top on and then basically a thong. Oh, and um, he was handing out. 
communion shots and people were taking them oh, that's and great. they're like thank you jesus and he's like i did it for you and he just was taking pictures with people it was the best fucking easter i've ever had it was a good time that's nice that's awesome um yeah i think that i think the other thing about new orleans too is that if you were living anywhere near town you would eventually get sick of the um constant parades like the you know any any chance to have a raucous drunken parade through through town uh you know for every every minor holiday arbor day you know national trombone day whatever they're gonna like throw a parade but i think i mean that's part of the fun of new orleans though maybe nashville was different because it's yeah. just drunken bachelorette parties where this had a little bit more culture thrown into it i felt but yeah. i mean you're right i would probably with any city you're gonna get sick of certain things so you know that was right one, um they had uh saint patty's day um here they had like a block party um just about a block away that we went to went to brunch me and my, my two neighbors um brunch and then we walked around and just like went from kind of bar to bar and they had a bunch of little bars set up it reminded me a lot of downtown orlando when they like kind of have block parties yeah and they, they closed down like the you know three three different blocks so you can kind of walk around the whole area uh it was really nice except it was um like just fewer people so it wasn't like so insane that you can't walk through the crowds and it was enough people that they stay busy and they make money and that's good for them but also enough space that you could actually walk into one of the bars and like sit at the bar you could find a spot maybe you know and, and stuff like that yeah and that, that was really uh really kind of nice that's cool uh, yeah um so it just made me think of that too yeah well, also in New Orleans, so we travel with his sister. <laughs> it's funny. So his sister was mentioning how her and her boyfriend are going on a trip for their anniversary. Mm. And I was like, oh, interesting, because Roy and I are celebrating our four-year anniversary this Friday, which That's is right. crazy to think about. Four, um, four fucking years um, of just going on our first date, um, right. not officially like boyfriend, girlfriend, but whatever, four years. And um, so I asked him, I was like, oh, that's interesting. You know, your sister and her boyfriend are doing a trip. What are we doing for our anniversary? And uh, kind of just put that in his ear when we were there. And then he's been planning stuff. So we have yep. plans. Um, we're actually going to do it on Thursday because my friend's coming in on Friday. So we'll probably just do something more low key, but have something. That's good. Do. I think it's good to, you know. Have do something you know it is it's important um to yeah. have something there we and... typically don't do well we didn't do valentine's day because i was in another country and we didn't celebrate <laughs> last year because i was in another country and right. we did most of the time i'm in another country when it's like the things to celebrate so yeah it will be nice so since you happen to be here for once with him in the same in the, you know same state same city same house might as well yeah. do something yeah. um it is hard to believe that four years ago you went on a really bizarre masked picnic date with uh, with Roy and um... I don't think we were well. The our first date was actually a Zoom. Oh, oh we, was, we did this, four is this or five. Of the Zoom date. Yeah, this was okay. like the Zoom date. Yeah, so this was because I was gonna <laughs> I was watching Love Is Blind and I was gonna unmatch him because he's like our conversations kind of died. Oh, that's, I was like, right. Eh, that's right. Yeah, maybe I will unmatch him, and then for whatever reason, it was like find love love is blind like the first season that came out oh i just gave it some hope and said what the fuck at this point yeah. everything sucks anyways how could this get any worse and went on the date with him was it your second date that was the picnic it was like five dates after i because... just i just remember that you still we still have people mad at you for it Oh, see, I didn't even realize people were mad at no, me for that. They said something. Yeah, you, yeah. No, we knew that. It was like it was. No, someone was just like, no the val yeah. my Valentine's Day, my birthday, celebrating my birthday pissed a lot of people off because okay. I went I, out I to a that. restaurant. Okay, that's right. That where no one was at. Something with my two friends that were vaccinated. Like, was, uh, yeah, that's right. That's what it was. I thought it was yes. a date with Roy. Okay, no, no, never mind. No, no, no. Our um, first, our first date, we sat six feet apart or whatever the fuck and ate public subs by the river right. and we're afraid to hug one another because right, that's right. that's what it was in 2020 public subs i wish there was a public here that i'll say what that that's one I big do miss flaw that. <laughs> none of the fucking grocery stores here can even come close but i will yeah. um well, that's that's oh, yeah okay that's true that's that's very uh, that's very sweet though i'm glad you guys are going to have to do something hopefully it'll be something uh, fun and you don't know what it is though it's still whatever it is i have no just... idea I imagine it's going to be something like dinner or something. I mean, it's it's. A I'm Thursday. guessing it's, it's just like going to be dinner. To somewhere random and on a Thursday night to come back by Friday. That makes no sense. Obviously, there's no way. Yeah. yeah so, 
Oh, that's exciting. But I don't have, I, I guess I feel bad because I'm like, should I just go to the store and pick out a little gift of something? Yes. I, but you know how yes. he is with lists and he has this list of things that he wants. Yeah, I know. But also, you know, that he likes to do things like he likes to cook. So there's probably maybe like a cool ingredient you could get that like, hey, the, for you might enjoy messing with this or something like that, you know? the fuck am i gonna have get you ever gotten, have you ever tried black garlic i've been i've been trying to get you to get black garlic for so long what the fuck am i gonna need black garlic for Adam? you, you put it in your food but it comes it's it's got a little Obviously. bit of sweetness to it it's different than any other not regular garlic and it, it's so good that you're gonna want to put it on everything if someone gave that to you for a four-year anniversary gift <laughs> what true. the fuck would you think be I mean, like if you, um if you put it like in a little basket with like a couple other like ingredient things that he might like to use i don't know i was just trying to think of what like i mean i i see the vision i i understand the vision i was thinking more he loves sweets so i was thinking more of just going to a store and just buying a bunch of sweets and putting it in a little bag uh, but... i was gonna say yeah it's it's tuesday so it's too late i was gonna say you could go to mms.com and you can actually get mms with little messages on them for really cheap relatively good price um that you could have gotten made if you yeah. plan this at all I know. I'm so like, we just Terrible. don't do. I know. Bir birth. Well, even just his birthday, we were just going to go out to dinner and I got him something, but he wasn't feeling up to going out. So we just had takeout instead. Oh, and right, that was right. his birthday. Yeah. So I don't know. And I got donuts. I don't know. Uh, maybe I should just buy something nice. Like, yeah. Is there like a gourmet donut place or like a, you know, one of those there things? Is. Yeah. Something like that might just be a nice little like you know, in the morning or whatever that you go get that. And that's kind of like a happy anniversary or some sweets that, you know, he'll eat by the end of the day yeah. um, because he uh, loves his sweets. Well, I just don't think it needs to be this big, like what big gesture gift am I going to get? Yeah, I know, but it's, you know, but it is, you know, it's, it's important to celebrate these milestones too, because it's, it, you know, shows. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. But I'd rather just go out and have a nice date night yeah. at a nice place that we haven't been before that we've been wanting to try that experience. And that's what kind of where we're different, where experiences are more important to me than materialistic things. Yeah. And experiences are important to him, but if you could have a nice gift that he wants, He's going right. to want that. You know? He's also very particular like I am where he, like, he has yes. very specific things that he likes. and Yeah. Right. So yeah. like why buy him just shit that he's like, what do I need this for? You know, what do I need black garlic for? You picked up an, an ingredient. I, I, great. I guarantee you, though, like if you got some and you tried cooking it, like it would blow your mind and it would be, he'd be like, this is the best ingredient I've ever had. Like, yeah, I want to put this in everything. So I'm, I will buy it. Store, no, okay. Buy some Soul. Or, or on Amazon or whatever. But I just, <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Black Garlic. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking of that, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, I was going to say something. And, you know, before we cut oh, the break? Yes, before we cut the break. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I've been trying not to buy things because. I just like I don't want to start cluttering again, and so I'm trying to limit mm -hmm. limit my purchases to like, do I really need this in my house, or is it something I can have on digital, or is it something I can just live without? Um, but the other night, drunk, oh, I God. bought this is this is this is the stupidest thing in the world. I pre-ordered a vinyl of Billie Eilish's newest album with like a limited edition cover on it, like it's like a limited edition painted cover in vinyl. Why is that stupid? Well, I'll give you one guess why it's stupid. You don't listen to Billie Eilish? That well, would be stupid. I love Billie Eilish. How about, okay, another, I, how about another reason? About a vinyl record. You don't have a record player. I don't own a phonograph or a record well, player Well, I guess I guess it's time to get one. Yeah. Or just have it and it can hang it on my wall or something, I guess. Maybe it might be the thing. But yeah, I was like, why am I buying a record? I don't, I don't own a record player. Did I really call it a phonograph just a second You really ago? did. I wasn't yeah. going to correct you, but I'm glad you corrected yourself because I'm I mean, like, that's what, what it's the called, fuck? right? I mean, that's, isn't that what it's originally called? I mean, maybe, but people call it a record player Back now. Back in my day, we called it a phonograph. <laughs> it's not the Back worst. Back in my day, we ate black garlic and we called it a phonograph. <laughs> It's not the worst purchase you could have made, but yes, no, it doesn't I, really make that much sense. Yeah, I know. I said the it looked really cool art, and I and like she's one of my favorite artists, so I was like, yeah, well, okay, maybe mm -hmm. someday I'll have a place where I have a record player, and that'll be the only record I have, and it'll be great. That's okay. I only have three records, so yeah. Then I had a I want a record player, and then it broke. So oh, I didn't know that. That sucks. 
They've broken a move. That's fine. Oh. It was free. Whatever. All right. Well, um, last question. Can you remember what Roy's nickname was when you guys first started dating? Oh, yeah. Master of None. Master of None. That's right. I was trying to You remember couldn't remember. I, I was, I no, I couldn't remember. So I was, I was hoping you remembered. Master of None. That's right. That's because he bought he me that... the one. Like, I'm going to go to Whole Foods and pick up a bottle of wine. What do you want? Yeah. He used that line. He did use that line. All right. Well, with all of that, why don't we take a quick break? Um, and when we come back, we're going to do a quick little update on uh, last episode in February, February's episode about Passport Bros. And uh, so, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get back. So when we did the Passport Bros episode, I did a clip that I threw up on TikTok and a, like a little one minute clip that I pulled from our episode. And then one that I put up on YouTube as a YouTube short. And our YouTube shorts get... Um, well, they get some hate. The sometimes. shittiest people. <laughs> they do. YouTube, it hits the worst. YouTube commenters managed to be still, even even with Twitter turning into X and turning into like an alt right Nazi playground. YouTube still has the worst commenters. It's it's really amazing, um, just how how bad they are. And um, so uh, you know this uh, in that clip, I was just finding what a passport bro was, and I'm not going to go through it now because you should have listened to the episode, so you should go listen to it if you don't know what a passport bro is. But anyways, in defining it, um, I was not very kind, and I got so. I many don't think comments. you need to be kind, though. No, I don't. Honestly. I think I think it's a terrible phenomenon, and and nobody thinks passport bros are some uh, admirable respectable group of men except desirable those, yeah. yeah those men themselves and i got so many shitty you know like shitty dudes commenting me like you're disparaging the name of passport bros how dare you that's not what we're about at all you know we're all about we just want to find you know women who respect us and we all want to find women who who you know who are who are going to sub be submissive in a traditional way and that you know that's what they're trying to promote that they want Mm -hmm. um, so we had a little update on, on kind of, you know, what your typical passport bro is like, and it's a recent news story that I'm sure some of you have probably seen across most of the social, most of social media. See, this did not pop up on any of my social media channels really? okay. at it all. Was, I, I mean, I saw literally on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and, um, and Twitter, like it was, it was literally everywhere for me just shows, I guess the, you know, the, the content that I, I tend to see is related to this type of stuff. Yeah. Well, I guess apparently what a 36 year old from Ohio um, was hanging around a 12 and 13, 12 and 13 year old girls with mm -hmm. drugs and they found used condoms and yeah. they let they didn't they detain him and then they let him go. To yeah. Fly yeah. Back so to the US? so this this guy, his name is Timothy Allen Livingston. We're going to get his name out there as much. OK, as we're doing even, okay. Oh, yeah. Every, I mean, everyone's been putting his name out there. Um, yeah. He was caught. Like a, a concerned Colombian resident called the cops and said that they were worried about what was happening because they saw him like in the elevator with this 12 and 13, the 12 year old girl and a 13 year old girl. Um, and there were drugs related, like some type of uh, like a drug that they had to. And um, and so he called the cops and the cops go in, like go in and to and like detain him. But because when they got there, there was nothing happening, regardless of the fact that they found a bunch of used condoms in the trash. And uh, and also, why would a 36 year old man right. be with a 12 year old girl, 13 year old girl that he's not related to in some way, you know, like or knows in any capacity. Um, but they uh, they didn't hold him for some reason and let him go. And so the next day he fled the country, immediately left. And went back but he's home. not guilty. Right, Why right, would yeah, you no, no, of course not. Um, and the, the what 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 made this into like an international incident that everybody started talking about was this lawyer in Colombia. She does um, a lot of content uh, about um, like sex trafficking and exploitation of uh, Colombians, and she talks about how Americans exploit uh, you know people in Colombia as well, and passport bros as well. And so she wanted to make sure that this this guy did not get away with it. So she usually does like Spanish language videos, but instead she did like an English an English language TikTok that was calling him out by name and and saying, "Listen, he's a passport bro. He comes here to try to you know to take advantage of women and and try to you know use his money." to try to, you know, try to get what he wants and he cannot get away with this. This is not acceptable. And so it has become such a huge issue now. I mean, like this, the, him, yeah. his actual case is now international news. Surprise. Yeah, I know. Um, the only reason that this is international news is because someone's calling him out specifically. Yep. Which I'm glad you did on this yeah, episode. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah. 
Exactly. But like this happens all the time with passport bros, maybe not a 12 and 13 year old girl, but women in a position where they don't have the power to speak up or take control over the situation because that's they're dating someone or they're with a guy with the money and well and, yeah and i mean that's why you know we talked about that to to an extent too is it just that um if, if you have to go to a foreign country to try to find a woman who's willing to talk to you there's something wrong with you like that makes you that is right. extremely pathetic and then going you know a lot of times they they will go to countries where the age of consent is a lot lower too like the uh, i think like thailand is a, is a big um is a big popular yep. place among passport bros and so there's some overlap among you know what's considered sex tourism which is this deplorable phrase by the way sex tourism like and that, that is not a that's not a good phrase that's like a euphemism for for, for the, you know what they're doing um and uh, and the passport bros and yes sometimes they go places and they're they're not looking for someone underage but it doesn't make it any more any better like it doesn't make it any better that they're they're trying to like impress someone with oh look i i make i think in our episode we say like fifty thousand dollars or something like that like, yeah something like that like where your salary of fifty thousand dollars can go so much further and try to impress someone who makes you know a fraction of that and then try to basically put make her beholden to you because she wants to get out of a maybe not a great life you know a great life right. and you're supposedly giving her a, a better life when uh, you know it turns out you're she's just going to be essentially your slave once you get to the get back to america too um i think i think it's really good that this this has come out i think it because it does call out passport bros for being a shitty concept and yes if you're passport well it's bro, flat out calling out the concept yeah. not just a guy and his actions but saying he is a passport bro and putting those guys who prop it up to shame of like yeah this is what it is. Don't try to sugarcoat it and say it's about cultural whatever experiences. That's not what you guys are about. Yes. Case in point. Yes. I love and I do love that everything is calling him passport bro, Timothy Allen Livingston. Like it's not like that, that is part of his name, basically. Um, and the, the one one of the other, one and the other. And I've seen people now like comment on when people do post uh like uh, about him saying trying to defend passport bros that's not what we're like you know I'll tell you, if you refer to anything you do as a bro anyways you're just a douchebag uh, let's just yeah. say that too um yeah so now they're actually like a, a judge a, a colombia judge has asked for um extradition and so um they are trying to apparently extradite him to colombia and i think that would be fantastic now he can it is actually a crime in the united states to to do what he did in a foreign country. It's still a crime in the U S so he still violated a U.S. law, but I would much rather prefer that he get extradited to Colombia and have to go through their justice system, because I think that would be a uh, huge awakening to the passport bro community. If he was, if he was stuck in a Colombian jail. Yeah. Damn. So there's our, be continued. I know. Or maybe not. See what happens. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's our update on, on what how we'll see what happens with him. Hopefully, uh, you know, of course what's gonna happen, and this is just me being um randy about this, but uh of course what's gonna happen is he's gonna become the hero of the GOP. He's gonna be the next Kyle written now. So they're basically Oh, don't say that. Ted Stop. Cruz Ted Cruz is gonna be like, he's an American hero, and then like, you know, they're gonna make him the next speaker at CPAC no, this, or some this, shit like that. You would this say goes that against but, family values. Yeah, they this don't. Goes, they don't actually care about family values. I know though. they don't, but th this this totes the line of just being a little too controversial that they'll say no to this. I one. mean, Nick Fuentes is a literal Nazi, and they have him. Uh, they they like support him. Nazis so, so. is okay in their book, but yeah. someone who underage dealing with minors and things like that they they draw a lot that's the one place i think they draw we shall a see line. we shall see but I've, i'm thinking like in six months time we're gonna see lindsey graham get up here saying this man is an american hero oh, and he God. should be treated as such for some bullshit like that because i could just see them doing that i'll put bets on it yeah i know we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens <laughs> but uh there's our little update um this is also a time when normally we would have a voicemail or an email from somebody Ooh, um, I know but he's threatening you. I know, I know exactly. <laughs> Lightly threatening. I have no. I think I have one or two more to use, but I just decided to save them sparingly. But we would really love a couple more calls, so I'm going to ask you again, especially while the break's going on. We're about to go to break. Um, to please call 407-519-0181 and ask us a question. Tell us about a scenario that you want to get some input into. 
uh, just whatever, just something, something related to your life that, uh, that you want to share. And uh, you don't have to give your name. You can be anonymous. We just uh, want to hear what you have to say. So well, why don't you do that during the ad break? And when we come back, we're going to have uh, what to see with Sarah G. And she's going to talk about uh, what I usually call Venezuela, but she calls Nick. Nick oh, Aragua. my God. <laughs> <laughs> Where I thought she was for two weeks. Where but I actually, thought she was, it's she's actually Nicaragua. So she's going to talk about Nicaragua when we get back. Well, we're back with another what to see. And this week I am exploring Nicaragua, not Venezuela. Um, if you remember earlier this year in February, I was looking to escape the gloomy Seattle winters and go somewhere a little warmer and sunnier. And I ended up traveling to Central America and exploring Nicaragua, where Granada was basically where I made my home base during the trip. And although I stayed in Granada for most of the time, I did get a chance to explore a few of the other surrounding cities as well. Um, what I did find interesting when I was just looking at places in Central America to travel, and I've traveled to Guatemala before, um, is that not a lot of people consider Nicaragua. When I was telling people, yeah, I'm going to go here for two weeks, I was met with, but why? <laughs> why would you go there when Costa Rica is right next door or Guatemala or Belize or Panama? Why would why would you go to Nicaragua? Um, and part of it was, well, why not? Um, I'm highly motivated by cheap flights and the flight was cheap from Seattle. And I figured, you know, if I could do two weeks there, they have a co-working space. I've heard good things. It's low in tourism right now. So I'll get really an authentic feel for the country when I'm there. So that's what I did. And I came to learn during the trip that the locals really want tourism. They they see, you know, the bordering countries of Costa Rica and Guatemala. Well, Guatemala doesn't border, but, you know, uh, neighboring countries yeah. really pick up in tourism um, for things like volcanoes or just so many beaches and so many other things that countries in that region have to offer. Um, so when I was talking with tour or locals there about tourism, they're like, we're so happy you're here. What else do you want to experience? We want to make this the best experience for you. And everyone was just really friendly. And of course, I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I was able to get by and I just felt really welcomed um, and I had a good experience. Um, that That being said, I don't think if you're traveling throughout Central America and you want to kind of hit everything in the region, I don't necessarily think you need to be in Nicaragua for two weeks like I was. Um, I mostly just stayed in Granada and it's a relatively small city. But if you just have a week to explore, I have a lot of recommendations for just a solid week. Um, and let's just start with volcanoes because Nicaragua has 26 volcanoes and there are a couple mm. that are actually worth a visit. The first one I would check out is the Masaya Volcano located in the town of Masaya. It's about a 30 minute drive from Granada where I was. And it is actually the most active volcano in the country. But I was surprised because it's not your typical volcano where you look up to the horizon and you see this big volcano, you know, and the explosions and all the lava. No, this was nestled underground in like the not caves, but, you know, it was down there and you had to look down to see mm. the lava. And it wasn't a type of volcano where if you went during the day, you would see anything. You would just see a whole bunch of smoke. So when you drive up to it. I guess the Spanish explorers actually called it the gates to hell because it's just fire. The, the devil's butthole. Cause that's what I would have called it. Nobody called it the devil's butthole, but we can. <laughs> that's so, I think that's insulting. Actually. I even think the gates to hell is kind of insulting for the locals who lived in that area, but, uh, true. um, okay. <laughs> the devil's butthole, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but so if you do go to the Messiah volcano, I would recommend doing a sunset tour or just driving up and going by yourself around that time um, because it's the the best time once the sun goes down to be able to see the lava. I will lead with the caveat that if you go just in general, make sure you have sunglasses to protect your eyes and some kind of face covering scarf, something like that, because my eyes were fucking burning. Everybody was coughing and everyone's standing off the side, leaning over, trying to see the lava and just coughing and then the wind blows. So just bring some protective gear and don't stand by the crater for too long. If you go see Messiah, the second volcano, which is my must must see is Cerro Negro outside of Leon, Nicaragua. So I didn't realize this when I traveled over there. I just thought, you know, this volcano is going to be so cool. 
But if you follow any kind of bucket list travel activities, it's actually listed on CNN's travel, like must do's and most adventurous things as the second most thrilling thing you could do on vacation. Just in it's general? like they're lit. Yeah, in general, it is wow. the second thing. If you type in most thrilling things you can do on vacation list CNN, it is listed as the second most um, thrilling thing you can do because at this volcano, you can volcano board down it, which is incredibly unique and didn't even realize that was a thing. Um, it's only like 35 to $40 to go. You do have to hike up the volcano and it's about a 45 minute hike. It's not too, too hard. You do have to carry your board with you or you can, maybe your guide will carry it for a cost or whatever, but you hike up to the top of the volcano, you suit up, you wear protective gear. You're going to get so fucking dusty. It's not even funny, but I've done, you know, snow tubing and things like that. So I was really terrified. I was going to down the volcano and that's the end of me. Um, but I was surprised that I actually had a lot more control going down the volcano because you can put your feet on both sides of the board and lean back and forward to control your speed. So it's about, you know, a minute to two minute ride down, but it was so worth it. I mean, fuck, I would do it again. It was a great time. 45 thing- minutes to climb up and two minutes to go down. I mean, are you surprised by that? No, that's just a, you know, the, the, like that's why that's why I don't like skiing. It's the same type of concept, you know. It takes full salon to get up and then yeah, go down again. But I mean, yeah, but the hike the hike really wasn't too bad. Plus, it's pretty beautiful around there. But of course, as we're hiking up, they're like this volcano last erupted 30 ish years ago, and I'm hiking up, going, um, what the fuck am I doing on this goddamn volcano then and our guy's like no it, it'll be a while before it erupts again i'm like oh we're just risking my life right now that's cool just to slide down it like a dumbass um but it was it was honestly the best thing um that i did while i was there and of course if volcanoes aren't your thing within both of the cities of granada and leon there are a lot of really beautiful churches that you can climb up to the top of and get some amazing views of the city and take some photos there's also a lot of lakes around the area. There's the Isletas. There's, I did a whole, it was called the water and fire tour. And that was like the morning and the afternoon we spent at the lake. And then we went to that Messiah volcano. So there's a lot of water activities. If that's something more up your alley, of course, there are the beaches on both sides of the country. I just wasn't able to get over to that um, side. Um And then if partying is your thing, which I learned on this trip, um, uh, that is not my thing. There, there is a jungle party at this treehouse hostel about 20 minutes outside of Granada. And this rave starts at around 4 PM. So they'll pick you up at four and it ends at four in the fucking morning. You know, as little as, as little as I like people, as much as I despise people, that like a jungle rave and like, from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. sounds kind of amazing to me. It does until you're well, okay. So I'm speaking from an old woman's perspective. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm an old lady and I knew this probably wasn't gonna be all up my alley, but I'm I'm down to try things, and I think going in with an open mind was a good thing. Um I was good for about three hours because you get there, you you see the sunset. And that was why I wanted to get there at four. I wanted to see you're literally in the jungle, um, see the sunset, hear the birds climb around. There's the treehouse area. Then there's another DJ station that has other stuff and you're in two different tree houses. So the setup was really cool, but the vibes just were not for me. They played a lot of European house music. And to me, it just sounded like alien music after a while. And I wanted to blow my fucking brains out. Excuse me. But that's uh, both. uh, There were so many other Americans there going, what the fuck? And I was so surprised that, yes, there were Americans there, but there were so many more European travelers, I guess, doing a Central American travel Uh... trip for three months. And so Nicaragua was part of their stop. And the music was really tailored towards them. Um, they had played they played Murder on the Dance Floor and one song from Mamma Mia. And those were the two times the crowd fucking lost their shit. And then they went back to playing alien music. And I was like, did you learn nothing? This is what the people want. And I just kept holding out for actual music. You know, I, I'm there for the, the vibe. And it just didn't happen. So it was about $40 for a ticket. And it, it's a high price tag for locals. So there aren't 
locals there. There's locals working the event. Um, so if you're looking for a local activity, this isn't it. If you like European house music, perfect. Um, just not something for me. But want to throw that out there. That is something you can do. And it is a big thing. On Friday nights in Granada, there's fucking nobody around because everyone goes to this to the jungle party. Right. I imagine a lot of them probably don't always go at four either. Like they probably if no. they're going for the party. They probably don't go till 10 or 11. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. And so, some people yeah. get well, the last the last bus to get in is eight. Okay. So you have to be there at least by eight o'clock. And then 11 is when the first pickup. It's either 10 or 11. The first pickup mm-hmm. is. But at that point, I don't know. It's just. I could go on and on about the jungle party experience. Wait, I know when you tell told me that you were going to one of those, I was I was like, I was so excited to live vicariously through you. And then you were so you like so annoyed there. It was it was so funny when you're like on your Instagram story, just being like, and then telling me how bad, just how how annoyed you were about everything there. I mean, yeah, yeah. it was the the bathroom situation was probably Ooh. the most interesting bathroom I've ever had to pee in. Um. You know, it's just like being in another country with a different set of infrastructure sure, and sure. you're literally in a jungle in the middle of nowhere. So you're going to squat over this thing and hope for the best type of experience. Are, are, are there wild animals in the uh, Nicaraguan jungles? You know, I'm fucking sure there are because I was asking that question, too. And then my other question was, how does this music and lights affect the animals every Friday night? This probably <laughs> fucks them up. Their nocturnal system or whatever. Like excited about it. They're like, they go dance. That's what no, that's what I was concerned about. Not the people tripped out on whatever the fuck they were on. <laughs> I'm worried about the fucking animals. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways, those are some things you could do. And then as far as food goes, I ate very well <laughs> in especially in Granada. Um, uh, but if you're very short on time and you want more of an authentic Nicaraguan dish, you have to go to this restaurant called Restaurantes Comidas Tipicas y Mas in Granada. We were told by the locals at our hotel that it was the best place for the traditional food. And I totally agree. The service was great. Um, just keep in mind in general, everything I I spent a lot more cash Mm -hmm. than I expected to in the country. Um, and so this was one of the places where I needed cash and I was running low and almost, I was worrying about how I was going to pay. Um, because I did not have enough cash. So Bring a lot of cash or don't bring a lot of cash. You just have a lot of cash on you. There's ATMs everywhere. But um, that was a learning for me because I'm just so used to barely ever taking out cash unless, you know, I have fifty a $100 worth for an emergency, you know. Um, but overall, a great country. Lots of great things to explore people. And yeah, that's what to see. Well, just week. so you know, um, there are jaguars. Oh, you looked at them. Don't tell Oc- me that. Oh, ocelots. God. Okay, those are fine. Well, those are kind of I mean, those are just small jungle cats. So there's two types of jungle cats that are uh, that are there. Sloths. You could have seen some sloths. Um, oh, maybe. I did see monkeys. I did yeah, see and then, monkeys. And yeah. then a lot. There's a few different variations of monkeys: howler monkeys and other types of monkeys. Um, and then bats. Lots of bats too. It looks like different types of bats. bats. So just a FYI on what what maybe you uh, would have seen if uh, you were in the jungle at a different part of the jungle <laughs> where there wasn't a rave going on. Yeah. And the other interesting thing about traveling there was, uh, well, I had watched a lot of travel videos before going there to kind of get a grasp of what my experience might be like. And some people were saying, and I don't have a reference point because I've never been to Costa Rica, but some people were saying that Nicaragua is what Costa Rica was before it blew up with tourism. Mm. Because no offense, Costa Rica, I don't have a big draw towards Costa Rica just because it seems too commercialized. Yeah. By the Western world. I think it's be- I, I think, you know, staying at one of the resorts and whatever would be a really beautiful experience. But I do like some of the local experiences where you really feel part of the culture and they have that. You know, that's all of what Nicaragua offers versus I think Costa Rica is more westernized now. So oh, I just yeah, thought absolutely. that was really interesting considering they share their their bordering countries and they share a lot of similar features as far as volcanoes and lakes and craters and all these things so yeah just Interesting. keep that in mind all yeah. right that's all i got <laughs> no more raves for me La- that was my last rave at 32 i'm done <laughs> yes your last rave ever again first and last 
Oh, I, I forgot to tell you. That's what Roy has planned for you as your anniversary surprise. Aww. You guys are going to a European rave. It's just purely <laughs> Eurovision songs. Um, so that yeah. would be, but Eurovision songs would be fucking better than I mean, what ha- they play. I like house music. I like, like, I, I like the just the building crescendos and of like a you know the. That's not what this techno. was. No, that's not what this was. Let me reiterate. That. I, maybe I have to describe the music a little bit. Can you can you sing a little bit for me? Since. Since, since. Yeah, yeah. It was just that the yeah. entire since, fucking and then the, it, nothing. And then, since, and then but there we, was no building of anything. No, of like, any, oh, let's go beat drop. There was no fucking beat drop. <laughs> nothing. Just the same. And I couldn't tell the difference between one song and the next because it was just. What? No. Yeah. Like well, so, you know, th- when I went to Iceland, I, I and went to an Iceland um, strip club. It was like that where the. Um, <laughs> The, the music was <laughs> one long song that I couldn't tell the difference of when it was beginning and what was ending, and the music was not great. So I, mean, I will say that. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, because yeah. some Europeans really, some people from Germany really got on my case because they're like, "Why aren't you dancing?" I'm like, "I really don't like this music." And they're like, "This is all we play back in Germany," and I was like, <laughs> "I fucking hate this. I feel sorry for you." <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. All right. Well. Thank you very much. And we are going to go take a, our final break of the show. And when we come back, we are going to talk about the 4B movement and discuss um, how women don't need men anymore. So we'll be right back. So last week, I did a TikTok that said uh, that I posted that was just basically saying, hey, men, you know, you're not competing with other men for women. Because I, I see so many, you know, like so many shitty male dating coaches that are saying things like, you know, you got to be, you know, you're competing. Alpha you're competing male. Against. Yeah, yeah. You know, like it's the, it's the, you know, it's that alpha male Chad who's, you know, who's getting 90% of the women on the dating apps. Like that. I was like, and so I did this video that was like, you're not competing with, with other men. You're competing with peace of mind. You're competing with, um, you know, a nice night home you're competing with being able to wear whatever she wants without being judged you're competing without worrying about being gaslit or or assaulted you know you're competing with like you're competing with all of these things um, that have nothing to do with another man and that the sooner you can learn that and become a person that a woman actually wants to have in her life then you realize there's no competition at all and that's all you have to do is just become someone that a woman you know because women don't need men and it did pretty well. And I, and I got a bunch of comments that women kept saying uh, like 4B, 4B, you know, and, and stuff like that. And I wasn't, I, I didn't really know what that was. So then I Googled it and was reading about this 4B movement. And, uh, and then later on in something like something else you sent me to uh, brought it up as well. It was, um, it was like men talking about it, of course, in a shitty way or whatever. And, um, and, and, you know, but you were like, you should stitch these people too. And then, yeah. like, and then we have a topic. And um, so, yeah. Well, yeah, and there's been this huge influx of shitty men on TikTok talking about, well, what are you going to do if you're not with men and right. women are stitching it and being like, happy? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Alive? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh- <laughs> so, so, like, so it's just interesting that, like, you know, the, the concept that women don't need men is, is something we'll get into. But then, like, this 4B movement is its own separate thing that's been going on for a while now, right? Yeah, I think – so you pulled an article, and it said around 2015 or 2016 – the no marriage lifestyle was growing in South Korea and kind of just boycotting men and reproductive labor more in a in a broad sense. So that's they've had, you know, almost 10 years to really build up the momentum for this movement because it's not going to happen overnight where huge groups of women are saying, yeah, we're done, you know, and you and I were talking about this, too. I think. South Korea is just ahead of us as far as a movement where we're not putting up with men's bullshit anymore. We're mm-hmm. we're at the awakening stage as for people who are actually online, not critically online, but just somewhat online. They're seeing more content about women. We don't have to tolerate this anymore. Men, you should be acting like this and calling out men and their shitty behaviors where I think South Korea has just had a little bit of steam on ahead of us in that sense um and I, i'm happy that more people are talking about this and just the expectations of women don't need men to be happy and everything that's been happening in south korea it, i guess it has been reported because of the b4 movement their government is concerned because they had to close schools down because they don't have any first grade students anymore right. for like a couple of schools just didn't have first graders this year yeah. Because women aren't 
<laughs> reproducing with men. So that's that's the cause. And I'm seeing that trickle a lot into American politics now and yep. conversations in the media of our birth rates are starting to get low. What are we going to do? And it's like, have you considered any of the options that would make make it more desirable for women to want to have a child? Not only just a partner being a stronger candidate, you know, but also child costs and food prices and right. cost of li- all of these Family other factors. Leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of these yeah. other factors would really make it more desirable to want to have kids. Let's just forget about climate crisis and other things going on in the world. But if we, f- if we fix the infrastructure of those things, it might be more desirable, but at the end of the day, it's men, <laughs> you know, like to, to reproduce, you do need, unfortunately, <laughs> some kind of male sperm. So, just don't if if that's not something that's interesting to you and dealing with men, just don't do it. And and, and of course, in America, there you know instead of doing these things, they're also in like let's just take away the ability to have abortions because then right. you can't have an abortion, you have to have kids. Um. So what's interesting, and so the the, the South Korean movement because South Korea is more patriarchal in, in nature, um, and you know there there are more there are stricter standards of what women and men are supposed to do you know supposed in quotes uh, by, by yeah. society and that just got overwhelming for people but um i love that so 4b is actually what it actually stands for because i was like where does this come from too is that um b in korean means no and so it's um it's bihon which means no marriage be chulsan which means no childbirth be yone which means no dating and be sexu which means no sex so it's like they're saying no to these four things, four things H- heterosexual yeah. marriage and heterosexual sex basically yeah, as well obviously um but so that's what 4b stands for which i which that was really interesting to me because i was trying to figure out where 4b was coming from like having no understanding of korean language or like that i was like what is what does 4b <laughs> mean it's like i thought it was like a uh like a law that said so that someone in korea had enacted that women were fighting against or something like that you know like the 4b law or something like that um mm-hmm. So it's interesting, but yeah, so it, it's it's giving Korean women uh, to these days, this many years later now, still um, the ability to basically live autonomously. Um, and, and that because women have, the, the these women have basically come to the conclusion that Korean men are beyond redemption, which like that, I thought that was really a, a powerful phrase. Korean men are beyond redemption. And with they have very high uh, intimate partner violence in in South Korea as well, um, mm-hmm. and 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 you know and they're just instead of asking men to change, they're tired, they're exhausted of asking men to change. They're like, all right, fuck it, we're done, no more men, and it's just yep. like that is that is that's a powerful thing to do. Well, it's like why would you put up with a system that's not working for you? Yeah, and everything in this article, everything is built around the patriarchy. How women have to purchase clothing to look presentable, do yep. their hair a certain way, wear makeup, present in a certain way that's desirable. I also think in parts of South Korea, when you're submitting for a job, you also have to include a headshot and look presentable oh. in order to be hired. Like there's certain patriarchal things built into their system. And then of course, <laughs> women aren't paid as much as men. The, the, the pay gap is so fucking huge that it, you know, so they're abstaining from dealing with men, knowing that they're not going to make as much. But it's like, you know, they their culture is built in a in a way that it's like, yeah, you marry because you're not making as much money as the man and you're going to need him. So it sucks to suck. Just just do it. You have no other option. And women are saying, yeah, I'm fucking done with that. I'll just I'll just not. Yeah, I'll well, I'll make do with my less money. But at least I'll be fucking happy. <laughs> well, and if you don't have to spend money on on you know fashion for men and um, yeah. on on beauty products because you know the, the the men expect you to wear, that also ends up saving you money too. Um, yeah. And and I think that that's yeah that that it's 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 and it's made a it's made a it's made a statement. It's made a very very declarative statement. Well, also the Korean government hasn't done anything to make the situation better either. Like surprise, similar to the U.S., um, yeah. the Korean government launched an online national birth map, and it showed the number of women of reproductive age in each area and illustrated what it expected of its female citizens. Yeah. So basically, women were treated like fucking livestock. That's ridiculous. and they're just mapping out what we expect 
how many kids we expect these women to produce for our society. And the whole function of like, help us help you is like, no, you're not fucking helping us. You're yeah. just treating us as another number to build your fucking workforce in society. We're done. Yep. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I think I, I think I saw that one one of the women repl- replied by creating a, another map that um, showed where all the men with sexual dysfunction were. That showed the mm-hmm. high. You know, and I thought that was that was kind of kind of funny and just a, a good way to respond to that too. I, I, I just saw. I think actually, maybe you're the one who sent it to me. Um, a TikTok that I want to respond to, which was some douchey dude saying. Um, that it's a red flag to him if a woman doesn't want to have children. Did you send that to mm-hmm. me? I did send okay, that okay, to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, like I thought you did. Um, and and like that guy was so like just like, I don't know. Like I'm watching him just getting mad, listening to him be be like, I mean, she should want to do this, and she should, you know, and just like and and basically describing a woman as being a breeding mare for him, and mm-hmm. and having no understanding of, of first of all the risks of of pregnancy because even though it is um you know it's it's obviously we're not in the you know the 17th century anymore it's it's still a dangerous thing it can still women still die in childbirth they also experience extreme physical changes to their body emotional changes and you know chemical changes everything and he's just dismissing it like you should just you should just want to do this uh you know because that's right for for me and i'm just like these guys the fucking audacity that just the sheer fucking audacity it's the I want to continue my lineage. Like, bitch, who are you? The king of fucking England? <laughs> right, right. What yeah. what do you mean you want to continue your genes on to the next it's generation? Like the Nazi guys what? who are always like, you know, Aryan race is the best race. And you always look at them and they literally have no chin. And like and you're like, <laughs> you you are the the worst example of your race. And you know you should not perpetuate your you you in any way whatsoever. You should you should be able to die out. Yeah. I wish you would. Um, yes. <laughs> we all wish the people like and, that would. Yeah. And if it's a red and that's the thing, if you think it's a red flag that women don't want kids, you're the red flag, dude. Yeah, exactly. Like you need to understand. Uh, and I also have heard people online talking about men don't like it that women are saying no to having children because they can't fucking control anything around it. Right. Th- they can only really restrict that they could not use a condom and stealth. Yeah, or they could just I mean, that's really all they can't it can rape, obviously, which, you know, that whole situation. But they can't control if you're not having sex with them. They can't do it. They right. can't do anything about it. Yeah, exactly. It's the one. Th- it's honestly the one thing that women have f- should have full control over. Really, they do. Of saying, right. yeah, I don't want to have a kid. Yeah. Minus the laws going on right now in the country of trying to restrict abortion access and all this. But. Oh, in Arizona, by the way, the Arizona Supreme Court. I saw Court, that today. Yeah, just passed yep. a, uh, or just the Supreme Court said that the only law on the on the on the books now, because of Roe v. Wade, used to block it, was like a eighteen something, thirty four or something. That abortion yep. is only allowed if, if it affects the life of the um the, of, of the mother. That's the only time. So rape and incest is not an exception. Cool, um, cool. On the plus side, the Attorney General, uh, who is a woman, has said that she will not. Um, in any way enforce that law in arizona so she refuses to enforce the law well yeah because they're saying you could be thrown in prison for like a certain amount of time too yeah but she's refused to do that so which is at least a positive in that way but yeah so yeah and that's the thing that's the that's the really infuriating thing is that men instead of seeing this happen and say why is this happening what what can we do to make to to make things better what can we do? Like you said, providing childcare, providing, you know, like how, how do we make it so, so having a child is more attractive and marketing. You know, it's all like, fucking yeah. marketing. <laughs> instead of doing that, instead of, you know, offering like, you know, family leave and, 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 and you know, and providing better childcare options and better welfare options and better, you know, um, food stamps and, and, and better protection of children once they're alive, you know, and all of these things in, in school and all that, uh, improving the education system, all of these things. Let's just make it harder for women to have control over their own bodies. Like, and, and to, to, to realize that's what they think they can control. Yeah. yeah. And it's, but it's just like, it's, it's, I, I, I'm not going to be surprised when the next movement is goes from being a passive for B, like, you know, just none of these things to pro um, castration. Like, it's just going to become a, like, the, the, like that's, that's the next step. It's just like, oh, so you want us to take now, now you're trying to make it harder for women to, you know, be able to have control of their bodies. So, all right. Let's just, 
make sure men have nothing left to uh to impregnate women with and like i honestly can't like that that feels like that's a movement that i could see happening because of how men have reacted to this i yeah it it's infuriating to no end and i think it's only with South Korea as the example, I think this in the next couple of years is building and will yeah. be a bigger thing in the United States. Of course, there's still going to be people who want to be in relationships with men, marry men, have children with men. That's right, I, right. I don't think you're going to completely eradicate that um, with yeah. these movements. But right now, at least in the U.S., we are in the awareness phase and we're finding things out and how other countries are dealing with this, these situations. And we're going, you know, that doesn't sound like the worst thing I've ever heard. Being with a man sometimes yeah. is the worst thing I've ever heard. So this is desirable. And and like you said, there's so many people now in comment sections when men are shitty basically be like, 4B, 4B, yep. <laughs> I'm done. This just proves my fucking point. I want nothing to do with men. Um, And yeah, like there are, there are still they're still going to be men who are desirable listen to women and we'll give them the space to be there you know autonomous and all that right. but and those men are gay, <laughs> those men are gay. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part i think some men refuse to learn and this is the only way it's going to get through to you if you can't find something to fuck and to procreate with then yeah, the, I guess you know because I think uh, the population in the in so like if we bring this from South Korea to America, the population in uh, in the U.S. is probably split pretty evenly between men and women. I feel like I don't think it's quite fifty fifty men and women, but it's it's close. Yeah, um, I think there's slightly more women than men, but right. so that if you do have even you know if you have a percentage of women who have decided that they are no longer participating. That means there is a decent, decently large number of men who are now no longer having any any possibilities whatsoever. Um, and you know, of course, in our society, in, in American society too, women didn't need men. They did in the seventies because, which is not that long ago, um, yeah. they couldn't have a they couldn't have a bank account, bank account or buy a house. I think bank account, it was in the uh, 60s or 50s is when you could uh, finally open your own bank account without a man, pro, without your husband present or your father. And then I think um, buying a house was the 70s. You couldn't buy a house as a woman in in a recently enough that there are people who are still alive and around who, during that time who like who went through that themselves. Like, that's crazy to me. So yeah. now, of course, women are at this point where they're like, I don't like now I don't need you. I don't need you for these things. And, and men, men need to understand that if a woman chooses to be with you, like if she wants to be with you, that is a, that's a positive thing. Like that's a, that's such a, that's such a healthy thing. If someone's like, I am choosing to bring you into my life because I don't need you, but I want you. And if for a man to not understand that and instead get insulted and say, well, yeah, you do need me. Who's going to kill the spider next time you have a spider? Or who's going to who's going to change your tire for you? Or you know, or or who do you think built the road you're driving on or built that house you live in? You know, and like oh and, my and, God. and getting defensive and shitty about it instead of being like, "Oh, you know, I want to become the type of man that you want to be with." Like that that's the healthy the healthy way to go is to say like and uh, and that's the rational way to go. But this irrational defensiveness that these men get is so fucking pathetic. Like it is just and 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 it's like it serves you right, dude. Like you are never going to see or feel the touch of a woman again for the rest of your life because you decided to be defensive and you deserve it. Yeah. And you said something important too, <coughs> choice. Where I think there are men who still uphold the traditional family values thing. Yeah. We're getting married. Really, it's a choice in who you choose, but you're getting married regardless. That's not the choice of getting married or not or having kids or not. It's just who you're getting married and having kids with. It was never that was never a choice. Right. If you got to just be in the game or not. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's more of a choice of like, yeah, I don't want to play this game. I'm fucking out. And that put. And because marriage benefits the men, the men in the situation more than the women, men are even more. I mean, some some maybe are noticing, 
my quality of life isn't what I thought it would be at the ripe age of 35 because I'm still single living in a shithole and I've never cleaned my apartment before or whatever, you know? Yep. Where's yeah. the woman to take care of this to make my house smell good? And so I have nice sheets. There are so many fucking men on social media complaining and talking about how when they go over to their girlfriend's house, their girlfriend's house is just so much nicer and so much cleaner than theirs. Oh. And they just prefer to be over there at their girlfriend's. I'm like, bro, you can buy the sheets. You can clean your apartment. You can clean this. Those are things you are totally capable of. But always going back to relying on the woman to make you feel at home, to make you feel special. Like- do you understand why women don't want to be with men? <laughs> and, and I mean, I think there's a reason that single women uh, are happier overall and that men in relationships are happier. And it's because men in relationships uh, tend to be being taken care of. And women who are single don't have to take care of anyone. Mm-hmm. And, and Peace. That, yeah, exactly. I, I just had a friend tell me about a date she went on. That went really well. He seemed really great. And then um, th- there was their fourth date and he invited her back to watch a movie. And she said, sure goes to his place and immediately walks in and it is the most disgusting place she'd ever seen. Like he had dogs and there she said there was like dog hair and piles all across the place. There was trash everywhere. The dishes were piled up. He opened the bathroom to go in the bathroom. And just when he opened it, she could just smell piss. Oh my God. So he came back out and she was still standing because she couldn't bring herself to sit down. And he's like, Oh, do you want to take a seat on the couch? And she's like, no, I, I think I'm going to go. And she left and never talked to him again. Like, and, and like, I'm just like, I don't know how you can live like that as a, as a guy. Like, it's just, just that disgusts me. But oh to, to have the audacity to bring a woman into that and expect her to be like, have any romantic interest to you whatsoever when all she's looking around and just seeing how literally disgusting you live is, is laughable. And I don't, I don't understand <clears throat> in that situation either why you would think it's a good idea to bring someone over. Yeah. Like you think that's normal. And I, and I remember early on dating, I was so fucking impressed when I would go over to a guy's house and his place was nice because I right. had been in situations where he's got a fucking pull out chair that you like, you know, bring to a baseball game and a TV, like the stereotypical <laughs> right, right. Yeah. thing and a yeah. couple of posters of like scantily clothed women basically on his walls. And that was it. And I'm like, um, is this an adult that I'm, trying to have a relationship with so when i would go to someone's house who had a couch and like a clean apartment it was a fucking game changer but you don't hear men really talking about women like that of like oh i went over to her house and it was fucking disaster bro <laughs> right. she had no decorations and just so disgusting you never fucking hear men talk no. about it like that no. surprising Imagine wow that. wow yeah yeah so i mean you know that i think it just it really is an idea that yes, women don't need men, but men by God desperately need women. And if this movement, I mean, people are so mad at this movement and just yelling and criticizing the, this movement and not doing the inner reflection of, well, why would women feel this way and yeah. get how, what have we done for them mm, to get they, to a point right, where they're exactly. saying no more? Right. No, I don't care about that. Change your thoughts. Wrong, yes. wrong, wrong. That's what, yeah. that's all they want to say. These guys, these guys will go to the gym for, you know, 12 hours a day because some other gym bro tells them to, but oh, how dare a woman suggest, Hey, maybe you should try therapy or maybe you should work on being a better partner. And no, they don't, you know, they don't want to do that. These men are so obsessed with the concept of being a provider and a protector, even though they're not, they're neither a provider nor a protector. They're just, con- they're obsessed with the concept of being a provider and protector and they refuse to actually try to be a partner. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I just think this movement is a good reminder for all men, not yeah. e- not even just the men in South Korea, all men. Do better. <laughs> Become do better. a better partner. Be a man that women like and feel comfortable around and respected around and a trustworthy guy. Yep. Stop trying to impress other men and stop listening to other men and instead listen to women. Try to treat Mm -hmm. women like human beings and then try to see what they want and listen to what they have to say. And you'll be amazed once again, how, how healthy you can, uh, you can be and how much of a a healthy relationship you can have too. Yeah. It's amazing how a lot of our topics, uh, it always wouldn't sound like open communication, but now it's even more just listen to women. That's been a lot of the, the topics have kind of leaned that way 
lately. And I'm you and I obviously, because I get so sick of talking about it because I'm like, we've covered this enough, right? Oh, I know. I and know. then passport bros and then this movement. And I'm like, clearly we fucking haven't because now everything is dwindling into treat women like other human beings. Right. Women are not like women with respect. Just treat them with respect. That's it. Yeah. It's real simple. Yep. I know. And it's funny because when I do come up with topics like this, sometimes you're just like, didn't we just do that? I was like, well, we did a variation on it, but it's still Similar, like, it's, it's but, still important because you know. it's just one of these things that like, I just have to hammer it home uh, before anyone to even listen. And that, that's, it's unfortunate, but that's how it, that's how it is. Yeah. So. And my biggest takeaway for this episode, because it's nice to have another example outside of the United States and see how women are responding. My takeaway is let's have this happen in the United States sooner rather than later. Let's start pushing back more. Let's get out of the awareness phase of things and get into the action side of, yeah, we're really done now. We're not just, we're not just done and posting, you know, TikToks and things on social media. We're actively calling more men out about their shitty behaviors and saying, no, I, I will leave your apartment because it looks like a fucking mess. I will leave this date right now because you made me feel uncomfortable instead of trying to make men feel comfortable in a situation. Because what good has it? What, look at the point where it's gotten us to right now. And we're not fucking happy with that. So why continue to make men feel comfortable? Sorry, yeah. they have to be a little uncomfortable. We've been uncomfortable our whole fucking existence. Yeah, yeah. We got to come up with um, how we can do four B in in American in English. So I was, I was thinking about that, and I was like, "What can the four Bs be? Uh, birth, betrothal, banging, and the other one's dating." So um, it's another word for dating. I don't know. Maybe um, birth, betrothal, and what was the other one? Banging. And banging. That's pretty good. Dating. Good dating. What would be? All, the only B related to dating I can think of is Bumble, but that doesn't really. And Bumble. There, no, no, that's perfect. That's actually. Yeah. yeah. There we go. There we go. So yeah, there's a there's the there's the English version of four B. It's going to be birth patrol, little Bumble and banging. Like, let's just <laughs> okay. say no to all four things. And I mean, Bumble <laughs> probably won't like them being turned into a, a bad phrase, but you know. Sorry about right. that. Oh well. Yeah. So it's for the cause. <laughs> it's for the cause. It's for the cause. Well, um, we would love to hear your thoughts on this. I think this is uh, this is a very uh, interesting topic. Um, if you're a woman, I'd love to hear you know what you think about giving up men entirely. Like, is it something you're ready to do, willing to do? You can uh, you can call our hotline and talk about it, and we'll play your voicemail on uh, on air. And that's uh, that's at four zero seven five one nine zero one eight one, or you can email us your thoughts, and that's dating kind of sucks podcast at gmail dot com. And men. If you have an opinion about this too, and you're listening, and even if you're hate listening to this, you're like rage listening, and you want to leave a voicemail, we will respond to it and talk about it. Like I want to, I want to hear you. If you have an actual logical opinion, something that you think makes sense that we haven't considered, please by all means share it with us because the, it's something that I think would be worth us sharing with the audience. And even if you don't have a logical opinion, and please share it because it will still be valuable to the audience. That would be too. <laughs> And if you want to sound off in our Facebook group about the 4B movement or anything else like shitty behaviors, whatever, you can go to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash DKS podcast. Adam's riding solo in there. I've been locked out of my Facebook account for two months now. Oh, yeah, so, I forgot about that. <laughs> RIPV. <laughs> and of course, for $5 a month, you can become a patron on our Patreon at patreon.com slash DKS podcast. We're going to, whenever we actually do an episode, record a little mini episode after that's exclusive for just our members. Yes. And of course, if you want to watch this instead of listen to us, you can. You can also follow our YouTube shorts, which are entertaining um, at youtube.com slash dating kind of sucks. Uh, and then on Instagram, uh, I don't post them on at dating kind of sucks on Instagram. I post them on my own Instagram, which is out of Vittable. But you can follow that too. You can follow Sarah's on simply Sarah G underscore. Yep. Um, and then of course, five star rating and reviews on iTunes. If you haven't already, please, for the love of God. <laughs> yes, I know. If you've been Especially listening, we have, we, just, we really want more because, you know, like I said, reviews have gotten stagnant just because we've been doing this for like, we're on our seventh season. So like, yeah. it's been quite a while. So uh, I understand that most people have probably given us a review and a rating, but we'd love for you to do it. If it's new, if you're new to the podcast, please give us a rating and review. And a follow on Spotify as well. And a rating and review on there. They have That's those right. too. And we will be back. I'm In two say, weeks. If we can find another weeks. good top. I mean, topics like this, I think are valuable to bring to the table instead yep. of just 
what is this new dating word? What is right, this right. new sex position? I was yeah, like, so, okay, yeah. Cool. So we're, we want to try to yeah bring topics that are that are interesting and 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 really you know do an episode when it's something that that we feel like we have it's just worth worth us mentioning and discussing. So, yeah. Um, probably two weeks. I'm gonna say two weeks. Let's say two weeks. Yeah, before I go to another country that That's you don't right. know where I'm at. Before so. she disappears again. <laughs> uh, but yes. So we'll talk to you then. Until next time. Whether you're married or single or poly or ace, or hanging out with swingers back at your place, listen to us as we give no fuck on Tinder and Bumble and plenty of yucks, trying and trying and having no luck because we all know dating kind of sucks. Sarah and Adam are two of a kind. He says stupid shit and she doesn't mind. They're not doing this show to make any bucks. Life as a chicken whose feathers they pluck. Why does it work? Well, here is the crux. They both know. Dating kind of sucks. Dating kind of sucks.